I contemplating not recording this podcast this week. I really didn't know what to do. Was I going to do the regular show? Was I going to do my all-in review, even though I didn't get to see it because Bleacher Report was messing up? And I saw Terry Funk died, and that's... I was going to cover that in the news and give him a 10-bell salute. Rest in peace, 79. It sucks to see him go, but he got to enjoy life. One of the legends. A Hall of Famer. And then I got out of work on Thursday. Turned on my phone. And the news rolled in. Bray Wyatt has passed away at the age of 36 years old. This will not be your regular episode. I'm not going to do the news of the week. I'm not going to do your Smackdown and Raw reviews. I'm not going to cover an old pay-per-view. I'm not, I'm not even going to do my payback predictions. I'm just going to talk about Bray. Bray Wyatt is one of my top five favorite wrestlers ever. Ever. Undertaker, him, Seth Rollins, Triple H, Randy Orton. I would say he's one of the greatest, he is the greatest storyteller to ever do this. I'm not going to sit here and play my theme song. This episode is going to be dedicated to Bray Wyatt. I'm going to talk about what I believe his best matches are, his storylines, and his characters. And however long the podcast is, it could be five minutes, it could be an hour. I'm going to just talk about Wyatt. I want to talk about first Wyndham Rotunda, the man himself. Of uh, apparently, I never got to meet Bray Wyatt, and that's one of the sad ones. I'm I'm angry and sad. I never got to meet him. I wanted to meet him because that guy truly, to me, just seemed like he understood life. He understood, hey, I'm just gonna be happy, whether he was a bigger guy like me, or he was skinny. And he just never changed for anyone except himself. He had a great life of a wife and, I believe, four kids. One, two with his ex-wife and two with JoJo. He had his faults. No one's perfect. The only, in my opinion, the only perfect man is they put up on a cross. There are... This is too big to just cover in news. Bray Wyatt would bring you in and tell you a story. And apparently the man even behind the character was even better. As I haven't heard a bad thing about this man. And a thing of, hey, this guy's character was bad. No, he was... Everyone who talked about him, talked about him with grace, honor, and love. I wish I could have met the guy. I wish I could have sat down and just had a conversation with him. I want I would have loved to see what was going on in that head of his. When he left WWE, I was like, okay, they've lost one of their major talents. And him coming back, is one of the greatest returns because it was just done so well. One of the greatest returns in wrestling history. At least that I've seen live. It was just perfect. Kind of makes you wish it happened at WrestleMania 38. It really does. Wyndham was apparently someone everyone loved respected and would speak to with grace so 
let's start with the Wyatt family. First, Bray Wyatt was Husky Harris in NXT. His mentor, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Of course, he was just dashing Cody Rhodes at the time, and this was the original NXT before it was ever a promotion. It was a contest, and whoever would win would be signed to WWE. Of course, they signed everyone. Everyone basically on the show was already signed to WWE. You would come in. You got people like Daniel Bryan, Wade Barrett, again, Bray Wyatt, Ryback, Curtis Axel, David Otunga, and even more come in through and through NXT. And the first season of NXT gave us the Nexus, where Husky Harris was a member. And it was... It's been called one of the greatest storylines to have the worst ending. Because it ended with John Cena... Going Super Cena at SummerSlam and coming back from a DDT off of Cement to pick up the win and basically eliminate the Nexus. He would stay in the Nexus and then he would finally leave it and try to go on a little solo career. He would go back to NXT for a little where he would hold the tag team titles with his brother Bo Dallas. And if you ever played WWE 2K12 I believe... He is the first person you feud with in the superstar, in the created superstar storyline, Road to WrestleMania. So that's a really cool little fact. If you ever play it, he is the first person you feud with. He then goes to NXT and he starts working on this character who is based off of a movie character, which the movie escapes me right now. I don't have any notes for this, by the way. This is just me just talking. So if I forget things, I apologize. It's based off a movie character, and actually a former WWE superstar came up with this original character, did it for a few vignettes, and then they dropped it because they didn't want a cult character. He then comes up with this hockey mask kind of thing of this character, and... The hockey mask fell to the wayside, and then he starts talking with a southern drawl, and he's talking with a southern drawl and a little bit of inflation to his voice, and you know where to find me, and it becomes that, a little, a little more higher pitched, but he starts bringing in people of these brothers, originally his sons, but they quickly decide, no, they're his brothers. He then goes to NXT. His brothers win the NXT tag team titles. He tries to compete for the NXT title. And he just because it becomes this great thing in NXT of, all right, he was the really one of the first main stars of NXT that you're sitting there and going, all right, this guy, this guy knows what he's doing. This guy's ready for the main roster. He then gets called up to the main roster and immediately makes an impact by feuding with Kane and having a ring of fire match. He would beat Kane in a ring of fire match at SummerSlam. That's a way to start a career on the main roster, man. He would show up with Harper and Rowan, and that's really why they had the Ring of Fire was to keep out the Wyatt family, but the Wyatt family was still able to get in. And then they feud with the Shield, which is one of the greatest feuds that they could have. They had these unbelievable matches at Elimination Chamber still talked about. Three on three, which would lead to even more feuds after the shield disbanded he would have harper and rowan feud with dean ambrose and roman reigns and they would bring a third guy and it would lead to return of chris jericho he would then go on a feud with chris jericho and beat him at SummerSlam. and after that it would start a feud with the undertaker the Undertaker lost to WrestleMania, and this is still one of my favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. I don't know why, 
but still, every time I think of it, it makes me smile. It show taking place at night. Besides that, it was it was awesome. And why I think why it should have won. Why it should have won, and that should have been Undertaker's last match. Bray Wyatt and Undertaker would feud going into WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt would basically do everything. He would do the promos. He would do the video packages of comparing himself to the Undertaker. And it was basically the whole time for his career, everyone compared him to the Undertaker because it was a supernatural gimmick like his. Lights would go out. Undertaker would show up. Show up. Lights would go out. Wyatt would show up. Wyatt would be able to come back from almost anything. Undertaker would be able to come back from almost anything. You have these matches that were just unbelievable. And then WrestleMania 31. Undertaker shows back up for the first time in almost a year. We hadn't seen him since he lost to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And he turns back time. And has a great match with Wyatt. And I want to point out, by the way, Wyatt was injured during this match. It was awesome. Wyatt still put on a great match. And I guarantee you, he'll be the first one to say, you know what? Even losing to The Undertaker is still an honor and a privilege to do at WrestleMania. We then... Wyatt then starts to feud with other superstars. Roman Reigns at Money in the Bank. He cost Roman Reigns the Money in the Bank championship. Dean Ambrose. He feuds with Ryback for a little while. It was just a time for Wyatt just to show like, hey, I could I could do this. The Wyatt family had disbanded. And they really didn't get back together until Survivor Series that year. Where The Undertaker would show up to celebrate his 25th anniversary. You would get introduced to Braun Strowman. And you would have the Wyatt family. You would have Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper versus Undertaker and Kane. People wanted it to be Braun Strowman and Undertaker and Kane versus Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt. But still, they would lose. Undertaker and Kane would then show up again in London. Beat the crap out of the Wyatt family. And then you would have the Wyatt family go on to feud with the returning Dudleys. The Devon, Bully Ray and Devon. Bubba Ray and Devon. And then they would have a tables match where it would bring back some amazing ECW guys of Rhino and Tommy Dreamer. An elimination tables match. Where the Wyatt family would win after Eric Rowan got thrown through a table. They would then go through a clean sweep. After that, Bray Wyatt would try to feud with Brock Lesnar going into WrestleMania. He would get injured. The feud would be off the table. And he would then have his Wyatt family member, Eric Rowan, have a match with The Rock at WrestleMania 32, which would end in three, which would basically end in six seconds. John Cena would return, beat the crap out of the Wyatt family. Then he would kind of have Wyatt tease a baby face turn which never came he was then moved to Smackdown he would basically start a feud with Randy Orton and he would bring Randy Orton he would torture Randy Orton until finally Randy Orton decided if he can't beat him join him and Randy Orton would join the Wyatt family Eric Rowan was off with an injury Luke Harper was kind of in the fold And Braun Strowman was on Raw. You would have Survivor Series where it would be Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton against Roman Reigns. And they would basically pick up the win. After a RKO into a sister Abigail, 1-2-3. After this, Randy and Bray would go on to win the tag titles. The SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And then would go to feud with. Kind of Luke Harper. Luke Harper would say hey I don't trust Randy. And they would end up losing the tag team titles because of that. And then you would have. Randy Orton versus Luke Harper. In a 
and basically just like a hey settle this match Luke Harper would lose and would be kicked out of the Wyatt family WrestleMania Royal Rumble Randy Orton wins the Royal Rumble Elimination Chamber comes up Randy continues his feud with Luke Harper Bray Wyatt goes into the Elimination Chamber wins the WWE Championship my god the era of Wyatt arrived next night on Smackdown everyone tuned in to cheer for Bray Wyatt you deserve it you deserve it he had the whole damn world in my hand and he did he would lose the title to Randy Orton at Wrestlemania after Randy Orton would turn on him go to Raw feud with Finn Balor and Seth Rollins and actually have very good feuds and then would feud with Matt Hardy where he would turn babyface they would have a great tag team and then Bray would be written off TV for a little while so he could go have a baby his wife was having a baby and he wanted to be there with her that's fine Wrestlemania 35 comes and goes no mention of Bray Wyatt Raw after Mania. We're really glad that you're our friend. And this is a friendship that'll never ever end. Bray Wyatt shows up. Then there's a Mr. Rogers gimmick. What the fuck is this shit? I wasn't a fan. I was like, what the hell is going on here? What'd they do to Bray? Bray then comes out. As the Fiend after that. Attacks Rin Balor. Attacks all these legends. Leads to a amazing match with Finn. Amazing. One of the best squash matches I've ever seen. At SummerSlam that year. SummerSlam 2019. Bray squashes Finn Balor. While Finn Balor still looks strong. And this Fiend thing. This monster of let me in. Unbeatable monster. He was more Undertaker than ever before. And he goes on to feud with Seth Rollins. They have one of the worst Hell in a Cell matches ever. Ever. Ends in the referee stoppage. They have a no stoppage match a false count anywhere a crown jewel for the universal championship and Bray Wyatt beats Seth Rollins and is the new universal champion causes Seth Rollins to go baby to go from baby face to heel Seth Rollins then goes to smack goes to raw Bray goes to smackdown and we get introduced to the blue universal championship the Fiend has his own title. No sold quickly. He then has an amazing, unbelievable feud with Daniel Bryan. Reigniting their feud that they had years ago when he feuded with him and convinced Daniel to join the family. But once again, it was just a trick. Daniel Bryan never joined and he was just biding his time. Daniel Bryan then turns on Bray. And Bray never forgot, man. He starts fighting Daniel Bryan. Makes Daniel Bryan cut his hair and go back to the American Dragon. Ooh. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about this, man. They have a strap match at the Royal Rumble, which many people were scared of, but it ended up being the best match of the night. And then he loses his title to Goldberg at Super Showdown. Still one of the stupidest booking decisions ever. After this, he goes to feud with John Cena. And they have the Firefly Funhouse match. One of my favorite Bray Wyatt matches ever. I remember when it, when it happened, Mick Foley tweeted, that was amazing. And I responded saying, I don't know. 
if what we just saw was amazing or something we'd never seen before. Because if it's something you've never seen before, you could trick somebody into thinking that something's good is something great. And I haven't proven wrong. We saw something great that night. We saw Bray Wyatt tell a story that has never been told since in the ring. And never will be again. After this, he wins the Universal Championship back for Braun Strowman. After having a good but okay but not great feud with him, bringing back the Eater of Worlds character for a little while, and then staying with the Fiend. The Fiend beats him at SummerSlam. Roman Reigns returns and turns heel. Bray loses the championship to him at Payback in a triple threat match where Braun Strowman gets pinned. Braun Strowman. Roman Reigns goes into God mode and holds on to that Universal Championship for a long time, man. Bray Wyatt goes to Raw and forms an alliance with Alexa Bliss. Little Miss Bliss becomes a big part of the Firefly Funhouse, and they start a feud with who else but Randy Orton, because Bray hasn't forgotten what's happened. Bray and him have a inferno match, where Bray gets set on fire. Alexa Bliss takes over the Firefly Funhouse for a little while. And Bray returns at... Alexa, stop. Sorry about that. And then Bray returns at Fastlane. WrestleMania 37. The wrong man went over. Randy Orton pins Bray Wyatt in the opening night... Opening match in night two after Bliss turns on him. Bray comes out and says, like, hey, I'm not nothing's changed. We'll deal with Bliss later, but I'm still here. This be the last time we'd see Bray until Extreme Rules. In twenty twenty two. Bray would disappear. He would be released from WWE. And he would just stay quiet about what he's doing. We would lose Brody Lee. Rest in peace. And Bray wouldn't return until Extreme Rules 2022. Where he would come out to a thunderous ovation. And he was supposed to have this amazing, um, unbelievable stable called the Wyatt Six. But that never ends up happening. Bliss goes on the... She goes on the leave because she's pregnant. Bray has a feud with LA Knight that ends up as the Mountain Dew Dark match. Uncle Howdy shows up, Bo Dallas. And Bray Wyatt has the match with LA Knight at Royal Rumble. It was an alright match. It was different. The fight was good. The ending was a little crap. Bray Wyatt was just Bray in this time. It wasn't supernatural. It wasn't anything. He was just Bray Wyatt. He teases a feud with Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. It's supposed to happen at WrestleMania. And then he gets sick. Apparently COVID-19 hit him hard. And it spread to his heart. He was talking about a comeback at SummerSlam at after right after WrestleMania he was supposed to come back. He was supposed to come back at SummerSlam. That doesn't happen. We're talking about a return. He's supposed to return after at there. He's supposed to return at Money in the Bank. No one knows. And then right before payback. COVID spread to his heart. He was supposed to be wearing a defibrillator to sleep, apparently, until he got better. Bray Wyatt, 36 years old, dies in his sleep of a heart attack. Bray Wyatt was a complicated character in the ring. 
Outside of the ring, I've heard nothing but praise about him. I only saw us I take in this. I I said my prayers to to the Rotunda family. I can't imagine what they're going through. The only solace I take in this is he's back with Luke Harper. And he finally gets to see his buddy again. I pray for his families in my prayers. Bray Wyatt is truly one of my favorite ever. I think we all need a drink. So you know what? Drink of the week this week. You gotta take a bottle of wine. Get a nice rocks glass. Three fingers of wine. Take the bottle take the rest of the bottle. About a quarter of it. Pour a little out for break. A little red wine. The color red in the world of gray. For Bray Wyatt. Rest in peace. You will be missed, sir. Thank you for listening. Next week I'll be back with Payback and All Out. Thank you for listening. Again, rest in peace to Bray Wyatt. You were someone who was taken way too soon. And this episode's for him and it's for his family. I hope he's at peace. And say hi to Luke Harper for me. Um... Have a great week in wrestling, everybody. Hold your family a little closer this week. Make sure you tell them you love them. You never know what's going to happen. Just leave nothing unsaid. Leave no feelings untold. Fix the problems that can be fixed. Accept the problems that can't be fixed. And... End the hate that you have in your heart. Goodbye, Bray Wyatt. Goodbye, Wyndham Rotunda. We'll see you again soon. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great weekend, wrestling.